On December 21st, 2020, in California City, California, just days away from Christmas, two little boys were reported missing by their adoptive parents, Jacqueline and Trezell West. But as the investigation unfolded, it became clear that this was no ordinary missing persons case. The Wests are now on trial for the murders of these innocent children. Four-year-old Orrin West, his biological name Sincere, and three-year-old Orson West, born classic. Their bodies are yet to be found. What's even more shocking, the horrifying details that have been revealed in court. We're going to dive into the disturbing testimonies about the boys and how they seem to have been long gone before that December 21st call into the authorities. It's worse than we thought. So now, let's get into it. Jacqueline and Trezell West are charged with second-degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, child cruelty, among other offenses. In trial, the defense argued that the boys aren't murdered, but missing and possibly abducted, and they argue that the authorities didn't bother to look at anyone else but the parents as suspects. Witnesses in the trial gave testimonies as to when they saw the boys last alive, but there's one particular witness that is the most crucial and jaw-dropping, the testimony from Jacqueline and Trezell's oldest son. The Wests moved in September of 2020 to a house in California City from Bakersfield where they lived in an apartment. It was believed that their six children, four of whom are adopted and two are biological, all moved there together. One would think so anyway, since they did make a call about their two little ones missing three months after the move. Now on December 21st, Trezell stated that the kids were just simply in the backyard. He was gathering firewood, went inside the house for a minute, and when he came back out, poof, the kids were gone. He stated he left the gate open. He said he did a search around the neighborhood, which video cameras captured his vehicle leaving the property. He searched a whole six minutes at best for the kids around the neighborhood, and then he came back and called the authorities. Jacqueline, however, stayed back at the house. Trezell then waited by a tree for the authorities to arrive. Notable, neither of them knocked on the neighbor's doors in search for their children. Two days later, they then did a ridiculous outdoor interview, in my opinion. You can see the video that I did on that where I dissected it and talked about their patterns. They hoped that that interview would take care of things and that people would believe them. However, there were discrepancies. And what they didn't account for was their oldest son speaking out and finally telling the truth, a secret that they all had agreed on but has been since broken. Now, according to the indictment, it stated a timeline regarding the conspiracy charges, and it says on or about September 1st, 2020 to September 20th, 2020, Trezell and Jacqueline West formulated a plan to report a person and report the person missing. On or about September 17th, 2020, an unknown co-conspirator killed another person whose name has been redacted in the indictment, and it says according to the superseding indictment. The prosecution is saying that the Wests are responsible for the children's deaths, saying there was neglect, abuse, and inconsistent statements from them. But the defense is poking holes in the statements by the witnesses and questioning their credibility, not to mention the lack of the major evidence, the bodies of the children. Now their son made a statement revealing that when the family moved to California City, all six children, including Orin and Orson, were present. According to him, the last time he saw the two boys was when they were inside the van with their parents dropping off him and his three brothers at Trezell's parents' house on December 19th. This was two days before the phone call was made reporting that the two young boys were missing. But already there was a contradiction with his parents' interview. They said that they kept Orin and Orson at home because they were too little and their other four children went to the grandparents' house. And then came the contradiction from the oldest son himself. Because in later testimony, he said that Orin and Orson weren't in the van that December day. And he said that his parents told him and the other kids that Orin and Orson were with Jacqueline's mom. He said way back in September, about a week before they moved to Cal City, he said that little Orson was eating with his mouth open. So Jacqueline and Trezell blended it up and put the food in the bottles. And according to the trial, it was said that both boys were made to drink from the bottles. The son also said, that when Jacqueline and Trezell left the room, that Orin took Orson's bottle and drank it. And Trezell and Jacqueline allegedly told Orson to punch Orin because he stole his drink. 
The son also said that all of the kids slept in the same room and they had mattresses on the floor. He said he heard a noise coming from Orin one night, but said it wasn't unusual for him to hear noises from either Orin and Orson. And the next morning, he said Orin was face down in his mattress and there was vomit next to him. In a recorded interview, the boy said, I touched his body and it was cold. He said he didn't realize what happened and left the room. The other children were preparing and getting ready for homeschool for the day. It was said Jacqueline and Trizel tried to wake Oren up, but their son described Oren as fading, and Jacqueline and Trizel were crying. He said his parents realized that Oren choked on his own vomit, and instead of calling the ambulance, the son stated that Jacqueline and Trizel told him if he called the ambulance that they would be taken away. And to make matters worse, the son was told to keep it a secret even to the other children. What was interesting was there was a question posed by the prosecutor. He said, is it hard to handle being 10 years old that you had to keep it a secret that your brother had died? And the boy answered, no. The other boys were told that Oren was now living with Jacqueline's mom, and he said that he had no idea where Oren's body went. He said he didn't ask, and they didn't tell him. During the trial, there were two women who testified who lived at the Casa Loma apartments where the Wests live. One woman stated she received a call from someone who had been at the complex who was crying and panicking about hearing a loud noise and seeing a couple near a large metal trash bin. That person who called also testified and said she heard a really bad noise and said she saw a couple walking away from the dumpster carrying a blue ice chest with a white lid and laughing as they walked away slowly. Now, after Orin and Orson were reported missing, that same person said she saw Jacqueline and Trezell in the news and called the police to inform them what she remembered seeing at the apartments. The defense attorney, though, he sowed doubt about the woman's recollection of that night. She maintained that she remembers the day very well and cannot forget it. So the question is, was Orin in that chest? And did they just discard him like garbage? Was it Jacqueline and Trezell that this woman actually saw? Let me know what you believe down below. Now, here's where the cover-up deepens. When the Wests moved the family to Cal City, minus Orin, according to the son, Orin's bed was still moved and put in the same bedroom with the other kids. And it's reported as well that in the recorded interview with the son, he was asked how he felt about the bed being moved as well, even though he knew Orin was deceased. And he said he wouldn't say anything because of the promise he made between his parents and himself. The son also said that Orson was with them when they first moved, but only for a short few days. He said that one night he heard something falling and he said it sounded like a soap bottle. Now you gotta wonder when you think about it, what kind of sound would that be? And what would it be compared to? Let me know your thoughts below. I'm curious about that one. This time though, the son didn't have to harbor another secret. His parents said that Orson went to grandma's house and he would be back, but he never saw Orson after that and this same son thought that Orin and Orson's biological family may be called the police when they reported missing. He didn't know that it was actually in fact his parents that called in and the parents were alone that day that they reported the missing as the other four kids had left two days before the visit to Trezell's family. The son said he was confused because he saw on the news that Trezell reported Orson missing and Orin, and he already knew that Orin died well before this. He did testify that it was really hard breaking the secret and promise to his parents. And according to the CPS forensic interview who interviewed their son, she said in her second interview with him that he was being truthful, that his body language was different, and she believed he just didn't want to get his parents in trouble. Now, also in trial, there was a teenager and his two younger brothers who lived with the West six years ago in the apartments in Bakersfield and testified in court. And the abuse was apparent then as well. He said it wasn't normal the way Jacqueline would discipline the kids. He said if the kids wouldn't eat, she'd swear at them and then sent them to their room. She'd also would wrap her legs around the kids in a hold and hold her arms around their necks and scream while she did it. And he said that she'd do this anywhere from five minutes to an hour sometimes. Now the second oldest biological son also said that Trezell would spank the two bio sons and Orin and Orson with a metal belt and tell 
they would bleed on their butts. And the oldest son said when Orin and Orson would cry, they would smack them on their faces, which is so ridiculous. It would even, it would just make them cry more, right? Now, the oldest adopted son of Trizel and Jacqueline, who's 10 years old, took the stand. And the prosecutor initially asked if he knew the difference between a truth and a lie. During his testimony, he stated when they lived in Cal City, he shared the bedroom with another adopted son in either Orin and Orson. We heard from another child that all of them were in the same room. However, this boy couldn't remember if Orin or Orson were in the vehicle with them on December 19th when they went to the grandparents' house two days before they were reported missing. Now in trial, the jury was shown body cam footage where the boy stated that Orin went to his grandma's house on his mom's side but didn't know where Orson went. Another child in the home didn't know if Orin and Orson went to Cal City. One of the sons said the reason they weren't living with them anymore was because they cried a lot and said that his parents told him that they went to live where they used to live. This was told to them before they moved. And one of the sons also stated that the kids were at the Cal City home, but just for one day. So there's all kinds of different accounts. Now, Jacqueline's mom, Maria, took the stand and she stated that the last time she saw Orin and Orson was on October 10th, 2020, which was two months before the boys were reported missing. She said she saw the kids playing in the house, but didn't see their faces, just the backs of them. So she's saying she saw them two months before that report, of the kids missing, but a month after the move to Cal City. And according to an officer who testified, he said that the four other boys all told law enforcement they hadn't seen the boys since September. And also according to him, when he viewed the surveillance footage of the day the West took the kids to the grandparents' house on that December 19th, you can only see four kids going in the van and no signs of the little ones. But here's another report saying that she didn't watch Orin and Orson in September of 2020 or after that. So there's October and now there's September as well. And next we hear from Trezell's mom, Wanda West. We've heard about her throughout the investigation over the last few years. She said on September 19th, she drove to California City to babysit the kids. She said she watched four boys while Trezell and Jacqueline went to grab a U-Haul in Bakersfield to move their stuff to Cal City. She testified that Orin and Orson weren't at the Cal City home. She said that she had the kids until the next day on September 20th while Jacqueline and Trezell moved their stuff back and forth. She said at no point did she see Orin and Orson and she was told that the boys were with Jacqueline's mom, Maria. Wanda said the last time she saw the boys was in February of 2020, which was around 10 months before being reported missing and seven months before the move. Now remember, this was said to be on September 19th and 20th that Wanda saw them. And Jacqueline's mom said she saw the kids on October 10th. But according to Wanda, she didn't see the kids in September as they were with Maria. But the boys are saying they didn't see the kids. Wanda also said Trezell asked Wanda if the four boys could be dropped off for Christmas vacation from the 19th of December to the 23rd. And when they were dropped off, Orin and Orson weren't there and thought that they were still with Jacqueline's mom. The defense used the pandemic as the reason for not seeing the kids. And the defense tried to poke holes in the testimony during the trial. The defense attorney cross-examined the second eldest biological son who testified that he and his brothers lived at the family's California city home. The defense has argued that the process prosecution's case relies on false memories and improper questioning of the children. The defense also claimed that the oldest child was influenced and primed to make false statements about Orin and Orson's disappearance. They argued that the inconsistencies and discrepancies in the children's statements were the result of inadequate questioning by police officers who had no formal training in talking to children and that this can lead to false testimonies. The defense stated Dr. Napolitano is going to talk about the fact that an individual should have some type of training when they speak with children in order to prevent any type of implantation that can then result in false allegations or false memory. Now they also noted that the allegations regarding Orrin's death wasn't until after the son was interviewed multiple times. Now here's something that's really interesting in the trial. The jury actually went on a little field trip to the apartments in Bakersfield. Now, attorneys who aren't related to the case, they talked about this jury view and said, whoever is making the motion for a jury view 
It's got to be detailed and it has to have pretty compelling reasons for a judge to grant it because no matter where it's at, you're going to run into those kinds of security issues, geographical issues, and difficulty in maintaining a secure perimeter. It's said that the judge can decide on maps, photos, diagrams, and other evidence, which will give a more accurate depiction of the scene. And the attorney also talked about the defense and said, other times I think it's scary for the defense to do it because you simply have no idea what the jury is going to be looking at while they're there. You have an idea of what you want them to pick up from the scene that you'll argue later but people form their memories for all kinds of reasons outside the control of the judge or the courts and they could walk away with something that had nothing to do with the dispute in the case and make a decision based on that this case has angered many many people I remember the first year of the investigation things weren't right from the beginning from the phone call in to the ridiculous interview from the Wests, to everything after that, and also including the wait for the authorities, which was ridiculous. There were so many secrets, so many lies, and two little boys are not only presumed dead, but their little bodies are nowhere to be found and may never be found. And let's not forget about all the abuse that the children are testifying to. But hopefully, in this case, justice will be served, even if the bodies haven't been recovered. These little boys deserve justice, and the Wests deserve, at minimum, not to abuse another child again. Let's hope for the maximum, and let's see what happens. Check out my videos on the case right here. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.